Bienvenidos a este canal informativo Noticias al Día. Los invito a suscribirse y activar la campana de notificaciones si quieren estar conectados con lo que pasa a última hora, a últimos momentos. También recuerde compartir a través de las redes sociales esta información. Ucrania niega que su ejército haya ejecutado a prisioneros rusos. Kyiv señaló que extractos de video muestran que los soldados en cuestión hicieron ver que se rendían y dispararon contra las fuerzas ucranianas, por lo que no pueden considerarse como prisioneros de conflicto. No olvide dejar un comentario en este video y un me gusta también para apoyarnos. Muchísimas gracias. La Comisión del Parlamento Ucraniano sobre Derechos Humanos negó este domingo que el ejército ucraniano haya ejecutado a prisioneros rusos de conflicto, como denunció Rusia hace dos días. El mediador dijo que los extractos de video presentados por Moscú como prueba muestran en realidad a soldados que hicieron ver que se rendían, por lo que cometieron un crimen de conflicto al disparar contra las fuerzas ucranianas. Según Lubinets, esos soldados eh, no pueden considerarse como prisioneros de conflicto y sostuvo que aquellos que utilizan la protección internacional para acabar con las personas deben de ser castigados. En los últimos días circuló en redes sociales un video en que aparentemente se veía soldados rusos rendidos a los que obligaban a tumbarse y se oían disparos. También circularon otras imágenes en que se veía eh, decenas de cuerpos y una gran mancha. La ONU alertó esta semana que muchos prisioneros de conflicto capturados por las fuerzas rusas y ucranianas están siendo eh, acabados y dijo haber recibido denuncias creíbles de ejecuciones sumarias de prisioneros rusos. ¿Qué opina de esta información? Nuevamente los invito a suscribirse. Gracias por estar acá. Noticias al día. A NATO summit here in uh, June, and uh, I think that both uh, the hosting of the uh, summit and also the hosting of the NATO Parliamentary Assembly demonstrates the very strong commitment by uh, Spain to our transatlantic uh, alliance. The Madrid summit took some very important uh, decision uh, at the critical time for our alliance. Uh, we uh, made bold decisions on uh, a long range of issues, and let me just mention a few. We decided to step up our support to Ukraine, further strengthen our deterrence and defense, and invite Finland and Sweden to become NATO members. We also adopted the Madrid strategic concept um, uh, to adapt the alliance uh, to a more dangerous and a more competitive world. So the summit in Madrid was really a transformative summit. And now, uh, as we look ahead uh, to our summit in Vilnius in the Now next year, we are implementing the decisions we took uh, in Madrid. First, on Ukraine. President Putin made two big strategic mistakes when he invaded uh, Ukraine in February this year. He underestimated the Ukrainians' bravery and will to fight, and he underestimated the unity and relentless resolve by NATO allies and partners to support Ukraine. <coughs> he thought he could um, defeat uh, Ukraine in a matter of days. Nine months later, Russia continues to face setback after setback. And Ukrainians uh, continue to liberate their territory from occupation, most recently had some. But it would be a great mistake uh, to underestimate Russia. It retains significant military capabilities and a high number of troops. Russia is willing to suffer substantial casualties and is willing to inflict horrific suffering on the Ukrainian people. We have seen drones and missiles uh, striking Ukrainian cities, civilians and uh, critical infrastructure. So we must be prepared to support Ukraine for long haul. Yes, I know that this support comes with a price. In our countries, many people face a cost of living crisis. Energy and food bills are rising. These are tough times for many. But the price we pay as NATO allies is measured in money, while the Ukrainians pay a price which is measured in blood. And if we allow Putin to win, all of us 
have to pay a much higher price. Authoritarian regimes around the world will learn that they can get what they want with brute force. <coughs> this would have direct consequences for our security. It will make uh, the world more dangerous and us more vulnerable. That's the reason why we cannot allow President Putin to win in Ukraine. So we need to stay uh, the course together. And I count on all of you as members of parliament to keep making the case for supporting Ukraine. Second, deterrence and defense. We have been strengthening our, de our defenses uh, since 2014 in response to Russia's illegal annexation of Crimea. We have implemented the biggest reinforcement of our collective defense since the end of the Cold War. Now we are doing even more to prevent the conflict uh, in Ukraine from escalating beyond Ukraine. So we have doubled uh, the number of battle groups in the eastern part of the lines from four to eight, increased our ability to reinforce them up to brigade level, and we are putting more troops on higher readiness so they can respond faster wherever and whenever needed. To do all this, we need to invest more in defense. We have already made, as you know, many significant uh, 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 decisions and we have made together a lot of progress. 2022 would be the eighth consecutive year of increased defense spending across Europe and Canada. By the end of the year, uh, we will have spent um, well over 350 billion extra US dollars on defense since we made the pledge in 2014 across Europe and Canada. At the summit in Vilnius, defense investments will be an important topic, and I expect allies to continue making progress, including with commitments beyond 2024, because 2% of GDP on defense should be considered a floor, not the ceiling for our defense investments. Here again, I, I continue to count on your support. Third, resilience. One of the main messages in the Madrid strategic concept is the link between strong defenses and strong societies. The war in Ukraine has exposed some key vulnerabilities. For too long, we have been dependent on Russian oil and gas to heat our homes and fly our jets. And we have seen how Russia was, uh, has weaponized energy and tried to use it to blackmail us and to prevent us from supporting Ukraine. But Putin has not succeeded. Allies are now diversifying their supplies. We are moving away from fossil energies and investing in renewable energy. Uh, sources. This is good for our security and it's good for the climate. But we need to be careful not to uh, create new dependencies, most notably on China. Si no te quieres perder de los últimos acontecimientos que pasan en el mundo, suscríbete y activa la campana. Somos Noticias al Día.